Today we're going to be doing an unboxing video of the Einstar that Shining 3D sent to us as a review unit. We already have an Einscan HX that we've had for probably around four, five months. We've used it to scan quite a lot of things, so it'd be interesting what their budget-friendly or entry-level scanner will be able to do. Okay, let's get to it. We're going to start by opening the box. I already did this five minutes prior and I accidentally forgot to hit record. So now I'm just fake opening the box for the sake of realism. The first thing we see is a nice foam holding everything in place. I would have to say 10 out of 10 for packaging. The first item we see is a cloth that you can use to clean the camera lenses if they ever were to get dirty. We're going to put that off to the side and continue the unboxing. In here we probably have the power cord. Let's open it up and take a look. Yes, it is our power cord. Next let's take the bag. Here we have the case that the scanner is in. A very nice looking case. Very high quality if I have to say so. Here we can see there is the scanner. Our high speed USB connection cable as well as the transformer. Here we have the scanner, it has a nice silicone sleeve on it to increase grip and it also has a strap that you can put around your wrist, kind of like a safety strap, so that you do not drop the scanner because believe me, that is the last thing you would want to do. Inside here, let's open up the next box. This is the high speed USB 3 connectivity cable. Your power also plugs into this. A little note here from the future, when I try to plug this into my power USB hub because I didn't have enough ports on my laptop to run all the recording equipment, I ran into a problem. The scanner does not like to share a port with anything else, it just doesn't work. So keep that in mind. We also open up the third box and that was just a transformer for the power. Here we have the markers that the scanner used, that is a fantastic added feature. I've used some other scanners in the past, like the CR01. There you can see the 3D printed pyramid that I like to put markers on. This is for our Einscan HX. It just saves you on markers and then you don't have to remove them from the objects later. In here we have our user manual, which here is our calibration pad. And I only know that because our other 3D scanner uses a very similar object. It's used to calibrate the white balance as well as the tracking and accuracy of the 3D scanner. You do not want to damage that because if it's damaged and you try to calibrate, you could have end up with a 3D scanner that is not very accurate. Here's a strap for the case so you can carry it over your shoulder. I would say 10 out of 10 for packaging. Very, very well done. In our user manual here, we can see our recommended system requirements. You need an i7, GTX 1060 and above, 6 gigs of dedicated graphics memory, 32 gigs of RAM, and USB 2 and above. Next, we are going to plug the power cord into the scanner cable. This little cap you open up and you plug the power in there. For the scanner, the cable only goes into one direction. The red dot has to face the cameras. Next, we are going to see if the scanner connects and we keep getting this error where we see a red flashing light and it connects and disconnects from the computer constantly. So we are going to pause here and go do some digging online. If we can't find an answer, we will reach out to support. After going to Shining 3D's Facebook group, they have a Facebook group for the Einstar community. I'll put a link to that in the description. I found out that uh, one thing I could try is to install the software and then reconnect the scanner because that also installs the drivers. After we created our account, you can see here, you can see your products. You can also bind your product. And once you do that, you can start downloading the software. Another quick tip here, you can actually find the updated user manual on their website. There's a lot more information here and it's a lot more thorough than the one that mine shipped with. After that, I learned that I had to go and bind the product. 
and after you enter your CIR number, which you will see on the bottom of your scanner there, by the QR code, you can go to my products and you can see there is a download page for the manual that we just saw as well as all the software. Here we have their downloads page and the November 29th one is the newest current software at time of recording. A quick little jump in here, I have a plan, I'm going to make a handle for this in a future video where I can attach my phone to it so I can see on the screen what I'm scanning. Once we have installed our software and we open up for the first time, it's going to say our device is offline. We are going to plug it in. We're going to check the back and we should get two blue LEDs and one turns green after a while. From there, we're going to go to the calibration and we're going to just follow the instructions on screen. Very easy to follow, very well done, if I have to say so. You can also find these instructions in the manual, but everything is on screen. On the back of your calibration board, you can also find your serial number. For our first scan, we're not going to do some silly statue or something. We're just going to pick up the first thing we see, and it happened to be this very sort of high detailed truck that uh, is one of our toddler's uh, toys. Let's take a deeper look at the software. There are two main features or scan modes. One is for objects and one is for portraits. Portraits are when you want to scan humans or animals or things that move. I have yet to test the scanner out on hair, which I'm very interested to see, and that will be a future video. If we take a look at the object mode, there is a small objects and a medium and large object option. Small objects are for fairly small items, and I would say those are smaller than your fist. Medium and large objects are for anything bigger than your fist. They both share similar modes of alignment, its features, textured alignment, hybrid alignment, or global markers. For features, the scanner will just try to use the features of the object to scan. A word of advice, if you try to scan something in feature-only mode, it should have a lot of features, otherwise it will not work. Texture alignment uses textures or colors to try and align the object. Hybrid alignment is probably the best, and that is where it uses a combination of the above, and also you place markers on the object to help it with tracking. Global markers is a pretty neat feature. It is where you put your markers down first. Maybe you have a sheet that you have markers put on that you take everywhere or you put your objects on there while you scan them or a turntable and what it does is it scans those markers and you can save them to a file so whenever you want to do another scan you can just load that file or import it and it will help significantly with your tracking next up is the resolution and that is your accuracy and the scale of your meshes the higher your resolution or larger the number is, the less accurate your scanner will be, but the easier you will most likely scan objects. A lower resolution requires a very powerful computer. Lastly is the texture scan object. If you turn it off, you will not scan any colors. If you turn it on, you will scan colors. Here we have a couple of scans we did in our first attempt. As you can see, there's not a lot of information on the mesh. I really had a hard time scanning this object. And after a few tries, I was starting to get some good results. And it's all about just learning how to use the scanner. We are still missing quite a bit of detail. You can see the blacks and where it's very reflective. It does not pick up very well. We tried a couple of different orientations. And after we scan a couple of scans, we are going to align those scans in the software. The software is very much like their higher end software, looks very similar, and it does a very good job at auto aligning without the need of additional markers or manual assistance. I have to add, when we did our initial scans, we did not use any markers or any of those permit markers, and the scanner had a hard time tracking the object. This is also a semi-small object for this scanner, but it has a very nice large field of view compared to other entry-level 3D scanners, which makes the tracking a lot easier. Here you can see the final model of our first attempt. 
Next we're going to try something different. We are going to cover our toy truck in baby powder. It's a little trick you can use to get the scanner to scan those blacks. Here's the result of the first scan after we applied the baby powder. As you can see, we're already picking up the black areas that previously wouldn't scan very good. We're going to go ahead and do the alignment in real time. And as you can see, the software is very good at automatically aligning the scans without any user input as well as extremely fast. This is not sped up at all, and this is how the software works in real time. After we are done with aligning all of the meshes, we are going to go ahead and create the model. And here is the result of the image scan using baby powder. As you can see, there is a lot more detail. Now let's go ahead and compare the two scans. On the left we have the scan where we used baby powder, and on the right is the scan without. If you've liked what you've seen, go check out this next video that's on screen. It's where I use our Einscan HX, that's their higher level scanner, to scan the exact same object and we can compare.